All right, so from the looks of things, we should see the iPad OS 26 public beta drop tomorrow, Wednesday, July 23rd. According to Mac Rumors, which is a very reputable site, some leaks for the developer 4 beta have come out, and these versions normally come out the day before the public beta if we go on what's happened in the past. And that's really exciting because I know there are a lot of folks that want to try out these new iPad OS 26 features. This has been a huge year for the iPad as far as getting a productivity boost. Boost. We haven't really seen anything new or groundbreaking for the iPad since 2022 when they came out with Stage Manager. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and I've been using the iPad OS 26 developer beta for the past month. I've been testing out all the new features that Apple demonstrated for us. It really has helped the iPad come a long way with productivity and just managing your work better, your windows, your files and folders, and all the other things. Now, it's still been in a very raw beta form, so there are lots of bugs and glitches and that's part of the beta experience so I usually get really excited when they release the public beta because by that time they started to work out those initial bugs and kinks and things stop crashing so much and just start working a lot better so in this video I want to give you a rundown on all the best features you should try when this public beta launches and then I want to show you how you can actually get in on this public beta if you don't already know I'll give you a quick walkthrough on how to do that all right let's get into it okay so first let's talk about what you can test there are so many good features that came out this year I can't hardly list them all in one video but if I had to pick some of my favorites the first one on the top of the list would be the new windowing system they came so far with the new windowing system that they've released in this operating system now you can open as many windows as you want which before was a big limiting factor in addition they're so much easier to resize and shape they act much more like a Mac so I would recommend that you try the different ways you can move around these windows and even connect a secondary display try putting the same app on two different displays for example with Safari you can actually use the new menu bar to open a new window and then drag that new window to your secondary display while having your first window open on your iPad it's pretty cool to play around with the windowing system and see what you can do also make sure you give the stoplight buttons a new test run so in the top left corner you'll see those buttons just like a Mac and you can full screen your app or minimize it or even close it and if you press and hold you can actually reshape your windows in that way as well and position them on the screen now I mentioned that menu bar let's talk about that for a second that's a new one to try so you can just lift your cursor up to the top of the screen or you can pull down with a finger and make that menu bar appear lots of new controls in there they work particularly well with the Apple installed apps on the iPad the developers haven't had a chance to flesh out that menu bar yet so try it with the Apple apps but it works great my favorite functions are opening a new window from the window menu and I love the copy and paste and match style that is a biggie for iPad give that new menu bar a test run see what you think okay another new cool feature is the ability to change your inputs with your microphones oh my gosh we have waited for this for so long so if you're running a Microsoft Teams meeting for example and you plug in an external mic you can go up to the top right corner where you see the Wi-Fi and battery bar just click there and you'll get some options and when you plug that microphone in you'll get an input option and you can change and select the input that you want I've tested this in FaceTime I've tested it in zoom it all works great it's fantastic we can finally change the inputs so important now the next thing I'll mention is that you try out the new files and folders updates and so now you can make a new folder and you can color it based on the tag that you select and you can select a symbol to put on that folder makes it so much easier to tell your folders apart and then try dragging and dropping that folder on the far right side of your dock because now you can pin a folder to your dock for example your downloads folder I love of that and now you have those files easily accessible that's a Mac feature it's been around for a while it's really cool another thing you should try is the liquid glass look so now you have a choice where you can choose to have your apps and home screen look translucent and clear so just press and hold and go up to the edit button in the top left and I noticed something different that I haven't noticed before now you can choose clear light or clear dark and so you get a little bit different versions of clear or you can choose auto based on the light that's in the room or based on whether it's daytime or nighttime so give that that a try let me know what you think in the comments I'm curious what people think about these new clear apps I actually have a really hard time telling them apart when they're clear I click the wrong app all the time I just don't think it's enough detail that's just me let me know what you think about that okay so let's talk about getting in on the fun of the public beta if you want to actually download this on your device I'll tell you how to do that but be warned it will still probably be buggy and so your device may not work quite like you want it to so if you have a secondary device I do it on that some I 
iPad that you don't normally use, that you're certainly not using for work. I went ahead and made the leap and put the developer beta on my work iPad. Eh, kind of regret that. But if you want to get this public beta, it should have less bugs than the developer version. So to do it, I just Google Apple beta, and that's usually the first thing that comes up at the top, and you can click that, and there's a place to sign up with your Apple ID, and you can just click that. Once you're all signed up and ready to go, then you can go to the settings app and open up general and software updates. And then there's a spot where you can turn on beta updates. And that's pretty much it. Then you can download it just like any other iOS or iPad OS update. Works pretty smooth. Now, you can't go backwards back to iPad OS 18 unless you have a Mac to restore your iPad. So just make sure you want to do this before you take the plunge. All right, that's all I got for you. I'm going to release more content on this public beta as it comes out. I'm really excited to test it with less bugs. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.